Zach Pekoff here, and welcome back to another lesson video. Today, I will be showing you how to create line graphs. So let's jump right into the video. Okay, so in the last two videos that I've been making, we learned about how to create and interpret bar graphs. Now in this video, we're going to be learning about how to create line graphs. So in a moment, we're going to be doing an IXL where we're going to be learning about how to create line graphs. And we're going to read the problem, then use the information in the problem to help us solve it. So let's try a few problems together. All right, so this first problem reads, Jackie's favorite shoe store used customer management software to track the shoes she purchased each year. Use the data in the table to complete the line graph below. Okay, so this table right here is showing shoes purchased by Jackie, the year, and the pairs of shoes. So in 2006, there were nine shoes. In 2010, there were six shoes. In 2014, there were seven shoes. And in 2018, there were nine shoes. Click to set the points on the graph. Click to set points on the graph. All right, so this graph is going to be showing the different shoes purchased by Jackie. So we have the year on the x-axis and the pairs of shoes on the y-axis. And we're going to be using the data in the table to help us complete this line graph. So if we look, the first year is 2006. So that says that we have nine shoes. So we're going to put the point here. Then in 2010, we're going to go down to six shoes. So that's right here. Then in 2014, there are seven shoes. So we're going to go up one. And in 2018, we're going to go back up to nine. So this is the completed line graph for the shoes purchased by Jackie. And that is how to solve this problem. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this next problem reads, a meteorologist kept track of the average temperature in Minneapolis for a full year. Use the data in the table to complete the line graph below. Okay, so this table is showing the average temperature in Minneapolis in degrees Fahrenheit, the month and the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So in January, it was 10 degrees Fahrenheit, in April, it was 30 degrees Fahrenheit. In July, it was 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And in October, it was 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Click to set points on the graph. All right, so this line graph is going to be showing the average temperature in Minneapolis in degrees Fahrenheit. So on the x-axis, we have the month. And on the y-axis, we have the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to be using the data in the table to complete this line graph. So if we look. January has 10 degrees Fahrenheit, so we're going to start it right here. Then we're going to move up to April, which is 30 degrees Fahrenheit, so that is right here. Then in July, we're going to go up to 60, so that is right there. And in October, we're going to go up to 70. So this is the completed line graph for the average temperature in Minneapolis for degrees Fahrenheit. And that is how to solve this problem. So let's hop on to another one. All right, so this next problem reads, each year the Allenville School District publishes its annual budget, which includes information on the sports programs per student spending. Use the data in the table to complete the line graph below. All right, so this table is showing Allenville School District sports budget, the year and per student budget. So in 2007, there was $60. In 2009, there was $100. In 2011, it was $100. In 2013, it was $70. And in 2015, there was $10. Click to set points on the graph. Okay, so this line graph is going to be showing the Allenville School District sports budget. And if we look on the x axis, we have the year. And on the y axis, we have the per student budget. And we're going to be using the data in this table to complete this line graph. So in 2007, there was 60 student, $60, excuse me. So we're going to start this right here. Then in 2009, it's going to go up to 100. In 2011, there's also 100. In 2013, it goes down to 70. And in 2015, it goes down to 10. So this is the completed line graph for the Allenville School District sports budget. And that is how to solve this problem. So I'm going to be doing a couple more of you guys. Okay, so this next problem reads, worried about going over his storage limit, Troy monitored the number of undeleted voicemail messages stored on his phone each day. Use the data in the table to complete the line graph below. All right, so this table is showing us 
the different voicemail messages on Troy's phone, the day, and the number of voicemail messages. So on Sunday, there were four, Monday, there were eight, Tuesday, there were seven, Wednesday, there were 10, and on Thursday, there were seven. Click to set points on the graph. Okay, so this line graph is going to be showing us the different number of voicemail messages on Troy's phone. And if we look, the x-axis is showing us the day, and the y-axis is showing us the number of voicemail messages. And we're going to be using the data in the table to help us create this line graph. So it says on Sunday that there were four voicemail messages, so we're going to start it right here. Then we're going to go to Monday and move up to 8. Then on Tuesday, we're going to go down to 7. Wednesday, we're going to go up to 10. And on Thursday, we're going to go back down to 7. So this is the completed line graph for the different number of voicemail messages on Troy's phone. And that is how to solve this problem. So I'm going to be doing one more with you guys. Alrighty, so this last problem reads, Devin kept track of the number of games her soccer team won each year. Use the data in the table to complete the line graph below. Okay, so this table is showing us the games won by Devin's soccer team, the year, and the number of games won. So in 2007, there were 20. In 2010, there were 50. In 2013, there were 45. In 2016, there were 50. And in 2019, there were 10. Click to set points on the graph. All right, so this line graph is going to be showing us the different games won by Devin soccer team. And if we look on the x-axis, we have the year, and on the y-axis, we have the number of games won. And we're going to be using the data in this table to help us create the line graph. So we're going to start with 2007 with 20 games won. So that is going to start right here. Then in 2010, we're going to move up to 50. Then in 2013, we're going to move down to 45. Then in 2016, we move up to 50 again. And in 2019, we move down to 10. So this is the completed line graph for the different games one by Devin soccer team. And that is how to solve this problem. I hope you found this video helpful and useful. If you did and are a new member to my channel, then please be sure to leave a like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe as well. I would greatly appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye!